When it comes to geometry nodes, much like with any other tool, knowing when and how to use it in any given situation is half the battle. Sure, you can use it to create immensely complex systems and tools, but another strength to me is that you can use it to automate mundane but time-consuming tasks. For example, in my previous video, I had a couple of animations of spinning objects. One way to achieve this would be to keyframe the rotation of these objects with a slight offset in each one, and that would be perfectly fine. However, many times you might want to make a change to something to make it fit the scene better. Maybe you think they are spinning too fast, or that the offset is wrong, or that the animation should be longer or shorter, or maybe you want to animate the location and scale as well. All these changes means you would have to keyframe every object again, and if you have a lot of them in a scene, this becomes very time consuming very fast. So another way to do it is to use geometry nodes. This means that we can just add a setup to any object, and control each of the variables directly in the modifiers tab. So in this video, I will show how to create a setup that procedurally animates an object's location, rotation and scale, how to add controls for it in the modifiers tab, and how to use it in other Blender files. First we need an object, so I will use the default cube for a change. In the Geometry Nodes workspace, add a new node tree. Now, there are two main ways to transform objects in Geometry Nodes by using the transform node which has controls for both location, rotation and scale, or by using instance nodes. The way I will do it is by using the instance approach, because 1. it is easier to organize in a node tree, and 2. if you are using an object with a material that is using generated or object coordinates, the transform method won't work as well. The reason for this is that the transform node is applying the transformation on the actual mesh, much like when you are transforming an object manually in edit mode. So let's add the main nodes that we will be working on. First, add a geometry to instance node. With the mesh converted to an instance, we can now use a set of instance nodes to apply the transformations. These nodes are the translate instances node, the scale instances node, and the rotate instances node. And in case you're wondering, yes, the order of the nodes is important. Let's start by animating the translation. For this we need three nodes. A scene time node, a math node set to sign, and a combine XYZ node. The sign node takes the current time in seconds on the timeline and remaps it to a looping gradient value between negative 1 and 1, which we then apply to one or more of the axes in the combine XYZ node to affect the translation. Next, let's add some more control over the animation. Add a math node set to multiply before the sign node. And a map range node after the sign node. Since the sign node outputs a value between negative 1 and 1, we will use those values for the from min and from max values in the map range node. Now we can set a new minimum and maximum value with the 2 min and 2 max where the value in 2 min will be the lowest position in the animation, and the 2 max will be the highest. And with the multiply node, we can essentially set the speed of the animation. Just for clarity, I will add a frame around each of these nodes with Ctrl J. and then give them labels in the Properties panel that you can access by pressing N. Alright, let's do something similar for the scaling. Duplicate these nodes with Shift-D and move them over to the Scale Instances node. The only values we will change here are the 2 min and 2 max values to get a more reasonable scaling animation. Having the scale and location in sync like this looks kind of boring, so let's add an offset to the scaling by adding a math node set to add between the multiply node and the sign node, and set the add value to 1. And if you want to affect the scale on just one or two axes, you can add a combined to a C node here too. Ok, 
kind of squishy. For the rotation, we will do something a little bit different, since we don't want the rotation to change direction every second or so. Add a scene time node, a math node set to multiply, a math node set to add, and a combine XYZ node. Just like before, the multiply node controls the speed of the animation, the combine XYZ node controls what axis to apply the rotation to, and the add node adds an offset to the rotation. To reverse the direction of the rotation, add another multiply node after the scene time node and set the multiply value to negative 1. And that's essentially it for the actual setup. So let's make it controllable in the modifiers tab. Having it controllable in the modifiers tab has two main benefits. You don't have to go into the actual node tree to adjust things like speed and offset, and you can have different values for different objects. For the translation I want to be able to control the speed of the animation, as well as the minimum and maximum position. To do this, drag the multiply value, the 2 min value, and the 2 max value to empty sockets in the group input node. This exposes those values to the modifier tab, and makes it object specific. Press N to open the properties panel, and rename the values to translation speed, min height, and max height. I also want to be able to add an offset to the translation, so add a math node set to add, and add it before the sign node here as well. Then, just like with the other values, connect the offset value to an empty socket in the group input, and rename it to translation offset. For the scaling, I want to be able to control the speed, offset, and minimum and maximum scale. So just like before, connect the corresponding values to the group input. And name them scaling speed, scale offset, min scale, and max scale. For the rotation, I want to be able to control the speed, rotation direction, and rotation offset. So let's connect those values and rename them. For the rotation direction input, I will also make a modification in the properties panel. First I will change the type from float to integer, that way only whole numbers will be usable in the field in the modifier. I will also change the min and max value to negative 1 and 1, that way we limit the possible values for that field in the modifier to negative 1, 0 and 1, it just makes it easier to use. So with this setup, we can easily add it to any object, by adding a geometry nodes modifier and selecting it in the dropdown, and then adjust the values in the modifier to our liking. And if you want to use it in another Blender file, you just have to append it by going to File, Append, then browse to the file that contains the setup and open it. Open the node tree folder, Select the setup, and append it. Now, this tutorial had a focus on creating something that loops, but the same principle applies when creating a setup that, for example, moves an object infinitely along, let's say, the x-axis. To do this, you essentially just have to remove the sign node and map range node to remove the looping function. Or you could combine them and use them for different axes to create motion like this. I 
I hope this video gave you a little insight into how geometry nodes can be used to automate time-consuming tasks in Blender. See you next time.